2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Bring, bring light, shine light on the darkness, on the sin in 
out communities. A man may be known by his look, and one that have understanding by his countenance when thou meetest him. When you meet that man, you're going to see that. My sister, you understand that? My sister, my sister. When you meet that man, you begin to talk to him, you're going to see that he has understanding. And you guys begin to talk to him based on the Bible, based on what he's applying. As soon as you see him, you're going to see a change. As soon as you see us, you already know. I'm young just like they are, but you know damn well I'm not going to be out here with them. Because I'm walking different. Because I'm applying God's laws. I married the woman I'm with. I had children with her. I take care of her. That's the difference between me and the young drug dealers. The young dad's right. Like I used to get bank, I used to sell drugs, I used to smoke weed. But God's law is cleaning me up. And that's the difference. You see what I'm saying? That's what the Bible says. You are the light of the world. When I read that scripture, I knew that if I'm going to be living this Bible, I have to make a change and I have to commit to it. This Bible is about commitment. This Bible, God requires his men to be disciplined. You understand that? So I'm talking to you because you're an older brother. You understand that, bro? What's your name? Everything that he ordained for us, that we're supposed to be special and holy above all 
nations on the face of the earth. That's what God says about you. You see that shit out to make it, 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 so on this, on this sign, God calls you an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, that's right, Benjamin means son of the right, mm. your royalty to God, you understand that, don't let nobody ever call you West Indian Jamaican, Jamaican means the land of wood and water, that's not a nationality, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, you're special to God, and God says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, how do you keep it holy? Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. Six days you're supposed to do, you're supposed to labor and do all your work. That's the boy right there. Boy, this word is both y'all. What's the nationality, bro? Hispanic? What, what country do you think of? Guatemala? Okay, so God, God calls you an Israelite from the tribe of Zebulon. You too. Our royalty to God. So don't ever let someone call you a spick, a wet back. I've heard these terms growing up. These are derogatory terms. God says that because of our rebellion to him, we will receive bywords and proverbs in place of what he calls us in this Bible. That's why they call you Jamaican. That's why they call you Guatemalan. That's not what God calls you. God calls you an Israelite. That's your God-given nationality. You understand that? Uh, before y'all leave today, I know y'all about to go play <laughs> You know that that was put in our in our communities to keep us away from God. Sports, entertainment, everything that we see on the media. All of these things are to keep us further and further away from God. We watch the playoffs and, and football and soccer and all those cool things, right? But that's not in the Bible. We only learned those things when we were in slavery. There's a lot for you to learn, brother. You're 18, how old are you? Both of y'all are young. I was there at one time. I was looking at people like, what are you talking about? I don't want to hear that Bible. That's not for me. This Bible is for you. This is your heritage. Basketball, rap, sports. None of those things are our heritage. God had it ordained for us, for us from the beginning. So what we're going over today is, for you all as well, my brother, that today is the Sabbath day and we're supposed to keep it holy. And when we do that, we're showing God that we have respect. You understand? Don't you want to show God that you have respect for him? Why do you want to show God that you have respect for him? What has God done for you that you should show him that you have respect for him? Everything. He gave me one. He gave me one. He sent his son to die for our sin. So it's our duty to give him respect by keeping his commandments. Read Exodus 20 verse 8 one more time. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. So y'all are young. Do y'all have jobs? Okay. Well, when you get a job, the Bible says six days are you supposed to work, meaning from Sunday to Friday. Do all your work, buy, sell, do whatever you have to do. Read on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So it's very important for you to know when the Sabbath day is so that you can keep it holy and show God that you have respect for him. So the seventh day, meaning Saturday, is the Sabbath day. And that thou shalt do, thou shalt not do any work. So on the Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do any work. It's supposed to be a day of relaxing. No work, no buying, no selling, no cooking. Congregating with like-minded brothers and sisters going over this pipe so that you can further learn more about your heritage and learn about and further learn about how to clean up your community. What do you see wrong in your communities today? Where are you from? Queens? What part of Queens? Southside? Southside? Okay. I heard a lot about Southside. What's wrong in Southside? What's wrong in that community? Gangs? What else? Drugs? So, now you have a decision to make. Are you going to be on God's side and make a difference in your community? Or are you going to let this just continue to happen? Because no, we don't have the, we don't have the shackles on our necks anymore. You understand that, sis? My sister, my sister. You see what you see what we're going over? We're going over the oppression that has happened to our people. So today, we're going over the Sabbath day because today is the Sabbath day of the Lord, our God. And how we keep it holy is by not buying, not selling, not working on this day and congregating. Learning more about our history and teaching our people like we're doing so right now. So as you can see right here, 
We have the shackles that were on our necks. We were whipped. We were stolen from our land and sold to another people for buying men. We were servants. But today we don't see these shackles on our necks, correct? You don't have a chain on your neck. You don't have shackles on your wrist. You don't have any whips in your back. But how are we oppressed today? Huh? Racism, okay. Payments. We're subject to payments to this day. And also, by us following all the different things that we learn here in America, for instance, the different holidays, Memorial Day, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Valentine's Day, all of these things are philosophies of men, none of which are found in the Bible. When you read about Christmas in the Bible, God says don't celebrate, you understand? So when we're coming back, our, our mission when we come out here is to teach our people God's laws and for us to be able to make a change in our community. So in your community you mentioned drugs, gangs. So you learning that you're an Israelite today, how are you going to take that back to your community and be instrumental in the changing of their, of their actions? Tell people to change. We're changing you. Let's get Psalms 19 verse 7. Because when we come out here, we understand that our people are into a whole bunch of different things. But the word of God is the most important thing because that's what's going to change your life. That's what's going to save you. You go to church? You believe in Jesus? You believe in Jesus, sis? Are you saved? You're saved? Okay. Do you believe that you're saved in the blood and washed in the blood of Jesus? Okay, before you read that, read Jeremiah 8 verse 20. Let's see what the Bible has to say whether or not we're saved today. Because if we were saved, will we still be getting shot down? Will we still see drug dealers? Will we be afraid walking the streets at night? No. So we have an opportunity to be saved. But there's an action that's required of us, and that's keeping God's commandments. That's right. All right? Jeremiah 8, verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 8, and verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. The Bible says that we are not saved. So you know what that's talking about? It's talking about a dispensation of time. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. Meaning years and years and years of oppression. And we're still not saved. The Christian church is teaching our people lies. You understand that? What color is Jesus? You believe Jesus is black? What color is Jesus, bro? I don't know. I don't really know. I don't really know what to say. He's white? Okay. So the Bible says, can two walk, y'all are bored. Can two walk together except they be agreed? You understand that? So the Bible says that Jesus Christ is a black man. What color is Jesus, my sister? Brown. Brown. Let's get it. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So what we're doing right now is revealing the true image of Jesus Christ. Is this what you learned in church? This is what a lot of our people learned in church. So what makes you doubt this image? Y'all go to church. People say that they believe this image. So what makes you doubt it? Sis, my sister in the green shirt. What color is Jesus? What color is Jesus, sis? Wasn't he hung on the cross? So he didn't have a color? He, no, he didn't have a color? You see, you see how foolish that sounds? What color is Jesus, my brother? What color is Jesus? Strike one against the image of the beast 
that we were taught in the Christian churches. We are as white as snow. It's good, it's good. Huh? In his Don't eyes, whereas a flame of fire, meaning that the whites of his eyes were red because Remember, he drank wine. He has to we are. You could go into the and his feet, like unto fine brass. His feet, like unto fine brass. Your feet are the same color as the rest of your body, like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. What color is brass, brother? You believe it's brown? What color is it pink? Brown. So bra uh, br bronze, brass, and copper, they're the same color. They're brown. So the Bible, strike one, again, strike two, against this image that Jesus Christ was not a white man. This image right here does not have woolly hair. You have woolly hair. I have woolly hair. The brother here has woolly hair. Your ancestors had woolly hair. You understand that? Read that point again, verse 15. And his feet like a divine glass, as if they burn and they furnace. So now, you take something that's already brown, and you put it in the oven, and you let it sit there until it burns. What color does it turn when you take it out? Darker. So then what is this Bible saying about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? He's a black man, not just a dog here, he's a black man. Jesus Christ had a nationality. Don't even know what the Bible says that Jesus had a nationality. Give me that, Hebrews 7.14. The Bible clears up all the confusion that's taught to us by the Christian church. You understand that, my brother? This is not Jesus Christ. Read it. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. What it is evident, it's evident. Meaning what? There's evidence in this Bible that proves the lineage of Jesus Christ. That our Lord sprang out of Judah. That our Lord sprang out of Judah. So now, let's see what the Jews look like. What color is the tribe of Judah? We know it. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Take good notes, my sister. Read it. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourneth and the gates of our language. So what does the Bible say? Yeah. Judah. When you read, we hear the word Jew. Jew is an abbreviation of the tribe of Judah. So look at that sign. Judah today is the American blacks. You see that in the So the tribe of Judah is in mourning. Don't you see how people mourning out here every single day? Every single time you turn on the news, our people are crying because of the oppression that's happening to us. Would you agree, sis? Yes. Police brutality, some of our people are getting killed, um, uh, black on black crime, overdose on drugs. These are evident problems in our hoods. In our communities, we got to make that change. So the Bible says that Judah is in the morning. And they gangs the language. Meaning our leaders don't have any answers for us. They can't lead us all right because they don't know God's laws. They are black unto the ground. What color are the Jews? They are black unto the ground. So if Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, that means that he's a Jew. That means that he's black unto the ground. What color is the dirt? Brown. You understand that? So now, we have to clean up our minds. Is this what No, you go to the club. Do you have a girlfriend? That's what it is. You're 18 years old. I know. You're a young black man. I know. A lot of our young men have girlfriends, but they don't know the responsibilities that come behind having a wife. That's what the Bible says. God does not condone boys with a girlfriend. You understand that, my sister? I know that you're an, elder, an older sister, but we need to teach right here because we're young men. So we are, we are products of what we saw growing up, but the Bible says otherwise. So now, give me Psalms 19 verse 7 to show what cleans up our minds. Psalms 19 verse 7. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So, only I go to the Christian church, correct? What do they say about God's laws? Is it done away with? But what did you learn in church? Don't just don't just agree with these me. What did you learn in church? Does your pastor teach you God's laws? What law what did you learn in church? Hold on. In church. In the Christian church. 
church, Baptist, Pentecostal, which one? Yeah, Bishop Liz. Okay, let's deal with what we learn in church and see if it matches up with the Bible. So for one, you said that they teach the commandments and they teach not to curse. What commandments is that? Did they open the Bible and tell the congregation to turn to a particular page where it said, Thou shalt not curse. No. Because you know why? We sat in the Christian church. But we learned from our pastors. And then when we heard the Bible and challenged them in the scriptures, they couldn't give us no answer. So guess what? We left. And it was the best decision. Why? Because we came back to the Heavenly Father. So Psalms 19 and 7 one more time. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. God's laws convert the soul. You mean what? They change your mind. That's why we're out here. You see how you're wearing a dress? You see that, my sister, you're wearing a dress? A lot, a lot of our brothers and sisters, a lot of our sisters, I'm saying, they're, they're where did they learn that from? In the Christian church, do they teach against women? Do they teach against women wearing pants? No. But guess what? God says that that's a sin. You understand that, sis? My sister in the blue, in the blue, my tank top. Azel, come on. Azel. Come on up, sis. Come on up. The Bible says that our women should not be wearing pants. The Bible says that all men are supposed to grow their beards. Right. The Bible says to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Bible says that we should not be dyeing our hair different colors. But you know what? A lot of our people don't believe in this Bible. A lot of our people believe that we're saved under the grace of this white man. This is not Jesus Christ once again. And when the Bible talks about grace, let's answer that question. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. God's laws are perfect. Why? Because they clean up our communities of the sin. Converting the soul. Changing our minds from being niggas to being righteous, chosen people of God. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Uh -huh. Making wise the simple. Everything written in this Bible is a testimony of God. And it makes us wise because God calls us a simple people. Because he is the one true God. He created us in his image. But what do we do? We follow after a rock in the Muslim faith. We follow after Hinduism, Buddhism, the Christian church, worshiping a man. This man, Caesar Borgian, he was, he was, he was, he was a sex boy sister. Right? This is the history about this man, but a lot of our people walk blindly. Blindly, it's broad daylight, but we're walking in darkness. God's laws make us wise and being simple to So now, let's get the grace. You believe that you're saved by the grace? The grace. What does that mean to you? That we're under grace. You don't know? Okay. What does that mean to you that we're under the grace of Jesus? God has given us the law for us to be saved in Jesus. So that's what the grace means to you. So, with that explanation, does that mean that we don't have to keep God's laws anymore? He has given us the power. He has given us the power to Jesus who came to give us salvation. So for us not to sin, we follow the law by grace. We follow the law by grace and mercy. Okay, what does grace mean to you? Grace to you. having the right to live. Okay, my sister right here in the blue tank top. Sister, my brother, what does grace mean to you? Come on up. Come on up. We need to answer question. What does grace mean to you? Okay, because when I was in church, this is what I learned about grace. They said, well, listen, we're under the grace. Jesus died. His blood was shed on the 
us. We're under grace. We don't gotta keep no laws no more. That's what, that's what a lot of our people are taught in the church. That's why, guess what? The Christian church is filled with women. A lot of our men don't want to deal with that because they can't relate to it. This Bible discusses everything that we see here in our community. This Bible discusses it. This is why we're able to relate. God's laws were made for the sinners. God's laws were made. If you're already doing right and you're already applying God's laws, what do you need to be taught these things for? You but God's laws were made for those that, say for instance, a lot of our sisters are prostitutes. A lot of our sisters are wearing things. A lot of our sisters have four or five baby daddies. God's laws is for them. You understand? So now, talking about grace, we have Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What do you say? I'm sorry? When you go against God's rule, what do you say? What do you say, my sis? Would you say that it's going against God's rules? That the grace is not the occasion for us to continue in sin. Okay. Right. But what is what is sin? Because in order for us to understand this verse, disobedience. Disobedience to what? To the law of God. Verse John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. God's Bible says that sin is the transgress means to break. So sin is the breaking of God's laws. You understand that? So now go back to Romans 6 verse 1. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh -huh. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue breaking God's laws? Read that grace may abound. God forbid. Hell no. Why? What is the payment? If I break God's laws, what is the payment? I'll show you because a lot of our people read the Bible, but they don't really believe it. But I'll show you. This is the payment for breaking God's commandments. Mm. Right. This is the payment. Look at this, my brother. I want you to understand. Who had yokes of iron on our necks? Our baby. You know the nameplate? You know the nameplate uh, change? Where did those come from? What's the history behind it? Slavery. On who? Yes, but it wasn't on the grown-ups. It was on the babies. Because they knew that, a, that an infant went straight to fall from the mother. So they said, okay, you know what? Instead of putting the shackles on their, on their wrists and the shackles on their ankles, they said, no, put it in the nameplate of this so we know the nigga's name. We know the nigga's name. We're not going to go fall from the mom. What? We know the nigga's name. Put the name on the baby. That's what you did. Why? Why did God allow this to happen to us? You have to ask yourself that question. Challenge your pastor. I'm telling you, my brother. Challenge your pastor. Ask him to explain to you. Why did we go into slavery? What is sin? What am I supposed to do on the Sabbath day? Ask him these questions. Bring it out. What is the law? Why do I see all my people selling drugs? Why do we sag our pants? Understand, the reason I'm screaming is because it's seal. I want my people to change. Right. I'm, you're 18. I was 18 years ago. And I know all the women inside that I got a lot to repent for. But guess what? God's laws make us wise for being simpletons. You see what I'm saying? So now you got a girlfriend. If she did up, obviously y'all are uh, sexually active. She has a girlfriend. Okay, so now you have a girlfriend. If she gets pregnant, you live at home with your parents, right? If your girlfriend gets pregnant, what are you going to do? You already say you don't have a child. I'm assuming you either just graduated high school or you just graduated high school. Get away to graduate. I'm going to tell you straight, bro. When I was 18, I had just graduated high school. I ain't know a damn thing about life. I didn't know my left foot or my right foot. So I would not have known what to do if the girlfriend that I was with at the time had gotten pregnant. You see what I'm saying? So now, let's read. Let's read. Uh, 
it shall be our righteousness. Is the hour talking about the entire world or is it talking about one people? Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Unto who? Unto all Israel. So Moses was all God was only dealing with the nation of Israel. He used Moses at the time to speak to the people. So now go back to Deuteronomy 625. And now we see who the hour is in that verse. Do you understand? And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Talking about the Israelites, blacks and Hispanics. You said you're from the tribe of Benjamin. You're so cool with the Indian and Jamaican. So you're from the tribe of Benjamin. You said that you're born of Father. So you are from the tribe of Zebulon. Israelites. What's your nationality, sis? Nigerian. Nigerian, okay. But it, an evil, right? So a lot of our people, when you read Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, a lot of our people are scattered throughout Africa and different parts of the world. But as long as you can relate to these curses, because believe it or not, we broke God's commandments, God put curses on us. That's why we're bugged out of our minds today. It's not by coincidence. God knows what he's doing. Right. God cursed us as a people for breaking his rules. That's why when we come out here, we want our people to be changed. So now it shall be our righteousness, the Israelites, right? If we observe to do all these commandments, all the commandments, read before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. If we do all of God's commandments before our God, our God, the Israelites' God, as he commanded us, that's the our righteousness. So now that's what the grace teaches us. Teaching us to deny ungodliness. We should live in worldly lusts, right? We should live soberly and righteously in this present world. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.